and we had a, like our geologists work super closely with um, the designers of this, and like every single thing that you see is there intentionally. So, like the what we really want to get the crew um, well trained on is how to describe rocks. Like if you just go out into the field and you're like, uh -huh. I see a rock, it's gray. You know, like that's probably how I would do it. Except I'm learning geology. Like where the the cracks are, where the holes are, what the hole, you know, what the holes look like. If there's any like inclusions of little other materials, that's really important information to the geologist. And the crew is really there to be the eyes of the uh, scientists. Yeah, so we are actually just finished a dry run week this week with our scientists that are supporting a test in October. So they were here yesterday, we were showing them the rocks. They're like, oh, that's beautiful. So, uh, you know, we really have to train the crew to be the eyes of those geologists who are looking at video, which, you know, especially in the early missions, we may have good calm, we may not, you know, we're not, I don't know if we can count on having video. We, it might be perfect, but we don't know. And so we really have to describe, uh, learn how to describe things and speak the same language. Like, you know, big gray rock, what's that mean? What's big mean? You know, like, what's gray mean? You know, so we have little placards that have different colors on them. We have scale markers. So the tr crew is being trained to like, put their marker down, point at the thing that they're, you know, interested in and then describe it, take some photographs in certain sequences, and then uh, take their sample. They can maybe chip off some rock, which we won't do to this rock, but <laughs> we may put in other rocks. That's what these ledges are for, like place other little rocks. Yeah, little nooks and crannies, you know, you can stick things in there and um, so they can practice like taking their samples. And we have a whole suite of tools that we've been developing, geology tools like a scoop and a rake and tongs. It's really important that the crew doesn't really touch it with their hands because we want pristine samples coming back. Um, so to, the, oh, sorry. No, that's okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, so will the techniques that they learn, I know that the training and everything, the techniques that they learn you know, for yeah yeah so the I know it's all in the early phases well but the techniques are techniques right so okay. we have the geologists and they can tell you all about you know the techniques that they learn in geo 101 and you know those are the same techniques no matter where you're going so our objectives may be different like what we're looking for specifically and that's what they're on the team for like you know they may um, be trying to figure out the history of volcanism on the moon or you know what are these flows here what's the impact history and uh, really the difference is in the objectives but not the techniques so we could actually train the crew right now how to do all the techniques and they could go out and do their thing uh, but we have the science team here to make sure that we're doing the right thing so you know pick up rocks, but are we getting the right context? Are we getting the right information about those rocks that is useful to the scientist? So, because a rock without any context is useful. It's true, it is true. Yeah, like, okay, did that come from Hawaii or did that come from the moon? We don't know. But, you know, that's the purpose of all the descriptions and the um, sampling, um, the photographs, and we take pictures before, then we pick up the rock, and then we take pictures of what happened, that, you know, after you picked up the rock. Sometimes we'll trench, like get down into the uh, regolith, um, so we can get a deeper sample. Uh, sometimes we'll take drive tube samples, so like a big long tube that they hammer into the ground and then get that back out. Cool. Yeah, I know. It looks like just a rock. You have no idea. Cool. <laughs> Are there any of these in the pool right now? Yes. So yeah. you'll see them. Um, this is actually several different sections. This is just one section that they left out for you guys. They actually have NBL runs starting uh, next week, maybe the week after, that where we'll put in the uh, new suit. We're testing that new suit to make sure that it, it works the way we think it does. Um, and they've uh, designed a whole lunar landscape so that we can... Um, have something to do when we're in there and train the crew, start getting used to like, what do we need to train them on and how can we use the, the NBL in the best way. So you'll see that when you go up to the TC room. Uh, did you guys consult with any of the old Apollo guys at Absolutely. all? Absolutely, yeah, we've, we've been in touch with all of them <laughs> that are still alive and, and we frequently talk to um, uh, Jack Schmidt. Okay. Uh, so our geologists are very well uh, involved with the history of Apollo and what they did and how they did it and we're using everything that you know we can to learn from what they did what worked and what didn't work we've got the Apollo Lunar Service Journal which is a great reference so what's the difference between this here and they that are there? just different um, so this was actually designed it's 
uh, camouflaging one of the drain inlets. Um, so you'll see up above there's a, a drain um, for the pool to cycle the water okay. through. Um, but we so we have sand all over the floor in the lunar section. We don't really want sand getting in there, so they made some clever um, drain covers that are rock outcrops. They you know are similar to to the big rocks. Okay. All right, my name is Anna Jarvis. I work in the group at NASA that does spacewalk planning and training for both International Space Station work and for the Artemis lunar operations. Today in the pool, you're looking at a couple of divers simulating a moonwalk. Uh, they are working through the procedures for exploring different regular samples and collecting those samples for the science team. And how long, that's what they're doing right there behind you, correct? That's correct. Uh, a dive like this typically lasts anywhere from two to three hours. Um, if we have the ability to actually put crew members in an actual spacesuit, which is our um, expectation as we get into actual astronaut training, uh, those dives usually last on the order of six hours, which is much closer to the approximation of how long our lunar spacewalks should last. And so half of the pool is now for the Artemis missions, is that correct? Uh, roughly. You know, we're able to take advantage of the higher elevation of the International Space Station mock-ups and the lower elevation of the lunar surface, so there is some overlap there, but we are looking forward to, you know, having to share mission those objectives here in the pool. That's cool. So you can have spacewalk training for space station happening at one level and below them moonwalk training can be happening yeah. too. In theory, you know, it takes a lot of people to, to support both of those kind of testing operations, but that capability is something that um, that could, could foreseeably happen. And how often do you guys do the, the diving right now for the lunar training stuff? Yeah, I will say right now there's th things happening in the facility um, five days a week. Um, uh, we, tra we do suited operations on the space station three to four days a week, and um, we are looking at blending and folding in the, the Artemis training objectives a couple days a week as well. And just my last question for you, what will be happening um, throughout the rest of the year? Like, is there going to be, um, we saw some models of moon rocks that they were telling us they're going to start putting in the pool. So. Can you just go over what the plan is of the next sure. six months or so? Sure. Over the next six months, we are refining our uh, training objectives that we plan to, to, to accomplish here in the Neutral Buoyancy Lab. We are expecting to get um, uh, new suits in that replicate what our lunar surface spacesuits will be. And so we're folding those into the training environment, testing them out, making sure we understand how to integrate them into the training facility, um, and really trying to refine the um, objectives that we can accomplish here in the pool versus some of our other training venues that we have across the facility. Okay.